And, and by the way, when you're doing that, make sure it's cheap, make sure it goes to a place in the world that's really safe and that has this kind of weather, right? You could give it your laundry list yeah. and we go out and do it. So Agentic over the next two years will probably evolve quite a bit. Um, and then what you'll, you'll start to see, I'll kind of stop there, but what'll start to happen is then when you have all these agents out on the internet talking to each other, like my agent goes out and talks to Delta's agent on my behalf, right? Um, you'll start to see more and more interaction on the internet happen between AI agents than between people. Yeah. Um, and it will start to influence the very structure of the internet. So like a really good example is already companies are having conversations about, well, we're concerned because people aren't going to the website anymore. Right. They just go to chat GPT and hey, tell me about this. It pulls back stuff from the web and gives you that info. Well, now I don't have to browse there, right? So then if I can't drive traffic to my website, how do I make money through advertising? The question is like, does that whole model break down? Interesting, so interesting. I'll stop there. No, you're right, lot. because like all the click ads, all the, I mean, are there gonna be companies that even want to create a website or if they do, it's gonna be, okay, well, we're gonna create a website because we know that people aren't even gonna be going here. It's gonna be yeah. the agents that are finding it to do the. Yeah, so maybe web design itself becomes agent catered rather than people catered. But then another thing to think about is the idea of a fixed website at all, like if it, if, so one thing that AI LLMs can do really well now, like the app that I'm building with Gemini right yeah. now, is they can take a set of requirements and then just write the code. And if you think of code, code is a language. Right. And it's actually a language that's easy to understand because it's very much the same. It's, it's not about, I'm not, communicating nuance or emotions or ethics or anything. Code is just like, do this thing in yeah. this way, right? So for an LLM, it's very easy to understand code yeah. and how it works. Um, so it's very easy for it to write code. Now, is it perfect? No, it's not. But again, it's only getting better with it, each iteration. Um, so there's no reason to, to think that a website has to be a static entity Right. If I can go out, let's say I can sit down at my operating system and say, OK, I want to do this number one, number two, number three thing out on the web today. Why can't it just build a whole interface right in front of me on the fly to help me achieve that end? Mm -hmm. Why do I have to go to a website and use someone else's workflow to yeah. do it if I could have a customized workflow for me? Right. So that's coming. Yeah. Uh, that personalization layer. And we can kind of get into what that means. And you and I were talking to um, at least this next iteration of ChatGBT and the other ones. It's it's browser GPT based as opposed to working with certain operating systems. It's not going to mostly. Yeah, yeah. It, they do have clients you can install like Mac. There's a ChatGPT Mac OS app. There's one for Windows, I think. Um, but generally, and of course, there's iOS apps, Android apps, but you can still go out on the web and just hit chatgbt.com and get all the same functionality. Yeah, so. that's interesting with the website thing is I just thinking about our own website for our company. I, I'm kicking myself well, half the time. I'm like, why do I even pay for this? Yeah. Because I might get out of, randomly we'll get, uh, somebody will go to the contact page and say, hey, I'm interested to talk with you. But out of probably 50 inquiries, 49 of them are somebody trying to sell me something. I'm like, God, why do I even have a website? This is pointless. Yeah, luckily we don't have ads in chat GPT yet. When yeah. that happens, I'm gonna like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're right, because it's fundamentally going to change. Like if everything is click, I'll click here, or, or you're going to go to this website and there's all these banner ads and stuff, and this is how they make mm -hmm. money. Like all of that's going to go away, especially yeah. people aren't. So I guess the transition for older generations, it's going to be a lot harder for, whereas younger generations, it's going to be a lot easier for them to adopt. Hey, I'm going to let my agent go do the things that I do. on a. What would be, I guess, what would be in a normal day-to-day -day thing that you would use that for. I mean, you're not going to book a ticket to fly somewhere every other day. It's going to no. be... No, but there's integrations already. Google is a really good example, because if you think about Google, um, they were at first behind OpenAI, you yeah. know, and they had to play a little bit of catch-up. But now 
I would say they're at parity and they have an advantage of the entire Google ecosystem that already existed, right? So if you look at Google Workspace, which is Docs, Sheets, yeah. Gmail, all that stuff, uh, Gemini can natively integrate with Google Calendar as an example. So, okay, well, now I've given Gemini access to my calendar. If it can look at my calendar, understand it, create new calendar entries for me, now I don't even really have to look at my calendar. I can just have a conversation in the morning with Gemini and say, hey, what do I have to do today? Right? Yeah. Oh, uh, my boss wants me to have a meeting with him. Can you figure out his calendar and put something and figure it out, right? So that's an idea of like an everyday app that you use now is like AI enhanced. Right. And that's kind of, kind of you could draw a parallel to the whole dot com boom where it's like, oh, it's the internet. Let's everybody's going to make a website mm -hmm. and let's start a business called pets.com, which tanked right. hard. Right. And that a lot of companies like there was that boom and all that investment that happened. And then like, you know, 20 percent of it maybe remained and the rest just caved in. Well, I remember all Amazon. These, don't lose your thought. But I remember yeah. Amazon. It was like they were losing. I mean, probably hundreds of well, they millions. They were just books. Yeah, they every just, year yeah. it was like, hey, one day we're going to be profitable. One day, one day we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. And it was like one of the few big dot coms that survived. Yeah. And it was the people in the businesses that understood how to create a sustainable business online, right? So AI, what you see now is, you know, in, like at my job, for instance, we have tons of these vendor platforms that we use for different things like HR and security and Google platform stuff, you see just AI features built into all these platforms. Like, oh, I open my email. It can write an auto reply for me. I just click the button, right? Yeah. That's an AI feature. So you have all these emergent AI features that will eventually transition into, and I don't know where this is going to happen first, maybe at the operating system level, I don't know, but eventually it'll swap and you'll be talking primarily to AI first. And I might say, okay, let's imagine that in a few years, it'll be longer than that, because <laughs> it takes a long time for people to adjust. But imagine Windows, rather than sitting down and seeing a desktop with the same icons, the same start menu, same apps along the bottom, you get like a little face or a, mm -hmm. you know, avatar. And they say, hey, it's Tuesday. What do you want to do? Yeah. <laughs> right? And so yeah. then like, okay, uh, well, it knows I have this job and I work on Tuesdays. Maybe it knows that in the afternoons, you know, I go to a poker game or something. So it's like, okay, I'm going to lay out your desktop for today. What does today look like? Right? Mm, it might give you an, a preview of today's events. It said, oh, remember, you need to call the dentist because you need to schedule this, right? So it's going to be more about interacting naturally with another intelligence that helps you live your life rather than trying to navigate a pre-configured interface to try to get what you want out of it. Yeah. Right? And so the future is leveraging AI to create a very personalized experience for your life. Um, and it's just a matter of sort of all the tech, the websites, operating systems, pivoting to that. Mm -hmm. And you'll see like there's emergent AI features right now in the software, but it will slowly take the forefront. It'll same thing will happen with phones, right? Where it's like, I'm, Siri is a pain in the ass right now to talk to, but eventually <laughs> Siri will be what your phone is. Yeah. Right? That will be the primary method of communication and to, to do things with your phone. So do you think like, I mean, obviously we all have our habits and stuff. So like every morning when I get up and I go to my computer, I log into my bank, I check my balances. I look at what transactions have cleared. I kind of have my habits. Mm -hmm. I look at my calendar. I look at my email inbox. Do you think that PCs or, you know, Macintosh, whatever you choose to use, are going to kind of go away because people won't really need to get onto their computer to do stuff. It'll be more just, like you said, phone driven. Hey, schedule this for me. Hey, what do I have to do? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think that um, I'm a big believer that technology takes the shape of the most efficient form for what you want to do with it. So a really good example is why create a human looking robot that pushes a vacuum around your house to vacuum your house versus having a Roomba where it is the vacuum, right? It's right. like, okay, like 
maybe if a company had some sort of incentive to create something to feel more human, maybe, maybe if it could do multiple things. But in some cases, it's like, it's a vacuum. That's what it does. Yeah. So naturally, it's going to take the form that's most efficient to do that. You're not going to see, you know, down the road when AI is doing all of our surgery in hospitals, you're not going <laughs> to see a robot holding scalpels. It's going to be in the form that's most efficient to perform surgery, which is probably going to be a table and an all arm these actuator and yeah. right yeah so so going back to personal computing and phones as an example the most natural way for me to interact with the information that i need for the day i mean laptops are great computers are great because the keyboard is a long tried and tested method for me to convey information to the computer without talking to it. Right. right? And it's a way to type. And it, we're pretty good at doing it. Um, and we've been doing that for yeah, decades. The, the keyboard has been around a long time. Yeah. And back to typewriters. Um, but if you think about something like augmented reality, right? Right now you have, you know, Meta's putting out glasses that are, have reduced in size from the, you know, these oversized Big bulky VR yeah. headsets quite a bit. The battery power isn't quite there yet, but you know, there's technology like solid state batteries that'll probably get us there. The computing power isn't quite there yet. We have to get to where if we're gonna do AI enabled stuff on hardware, there has to be more like edge based AI happening on the device. So at a point where something like these glasses are cheap enough, comfortable enough, stylish enough, powerful enough, have good enough battery power, the idea of looking through a screen into this little box to do the thing I want to do will become antiquated. So it's like, well, why does that have to be? Why do I limit my field of yeah, view to this? Why do I have to do that? Why can't this entire table be my workspace where I can move digital documents around? Why can't I put my YouTube screen there on that window? And not even that, but why can't it auto configure my layout when I go from home to office to home? Yeah. Right.